Hello. Hello. Hi, Dan. Hey, folks. So we actually don't have any topics today. My bad. Didn't get a chance to update them last week or yesterday. Um, so unless people have things, and I'll drop the agenda. Um, yeah, I'd like to just give a, an update around the, the TOC elections, because that's evolved since the last meeting. But that's my main one for today. And the only thing I have, Dan, is uh, we're going to need some resources for um, a Kubernetes cluster. Cool. Um, yeah, we should be able to get you set up if Gail is here with onto the CDF billing account. Um, do you know where you were going to? Well, I guess we'll let's add that to the doc and we'll yeah, the, just add it and then we can get into the details. Yeah. <laughs> I want to jump ahead. So Tracy, update on elections. Cool. Anything else? The only other thing I think of would be GSOC. Tara's out today from her yeah. second vaccine. People, a couple more minutes. All right, I'll screen share and drop the link in again when it's all get started. Couple topics, um, but add more as we get started. Um, all right, Tracy, you wanna start with election updates and timelines? Okay, so um, last time we talked about uh, elections with the TOC for project seats. Um, but since then, we have also rolled in uh, elections for, for general seats. So in total, we are now conducting uh, elections for six uh, TOC seats. And if you go ahead and click on that blog post, uh, Roxanne has helped us put a blog post together with some main pointers and links. So we'll start there. and dive into it. Um, so there are two general seats open uh, on the TOC. And these are like pretty open in terms of who can be nominated. So anyone can nominate somebody. Uh, and the, the criteria is, you know, generally they have some domain knowledge or technical background uh, with continuous delivery and open source technologies. Uh, but probably more importantly, um, that they commit that they have the bandwidth and time to invest uh, working with this group to, to meet the goals. Uh, so there's a list of criteria there on the post. Um, and if you click on nominate someone, there's a, a form uh, where you'll just be asked to provide a, a few details and why that person uh, would be interested uh, in taking on the role. And so those uh, nominations are open to May 24th. And those are just distinct. Uh, so just to be clear, there's two separate types of seats we're looking for at the moment. So there's the seats the project reps are running for, uh, which are four seats and with candidates put forward by the projects and voted on by uh, the wider CDF community. And then these two general seats, which can be nominated by anyone and are chosen by the governing board. And if you click through, um, under project seats, 
in that blog post. So if you scroll up a little, then um, we've got a GitHub page which has kind of full details on. So I'll just wait for that to come up. So that lists um, the different project seats uh, and the two general seats, who's eligible, who can vote on each one. And, and if you scroll down, actually, I'll talk a bit more about the, the voting eligibility. So on the voting process for the project seats, um, we have used the LFX insights to draw up a list of all folks who have made contributions to CDF projects or CDF. Uh, so there is a document there uh, where we've listed out all the eligible voters who we are able to contact. Um, but what we are also making sure, because we don't necessarily capture all the contributors through GitHub, we've created a voter registration form. So I'd really like to encourage folks to, uh, if they see people they think should be voting and for some reason they're not in that list in the voters MD, I uh, highly encourage folks to spread the word and get folks registered to vote. And the deadline for, for that will be similar to nomination of candidates, so May 24th. So appreciate um, there's kind of two different types of candidates and two different sets of people voting. Uh, but yeah, happy to answer any questions or clar clarify anything here. So let me start by saying, does anyone have any questions? Hi, um, I didn't see the question right before this call um, about who is eligible to nominate for project seats. For project seats, uh, it is the recognized top level body for that project. So uh, for example, in Jenkins, it is the, the governing board. So some projects call it the technical steering committee, some call it uh, the governing board. Um, so basically that body uh, or, or the members of that body uh, come together to put forward somebody. And it's, it's totally up to, we've left it to each community to come up with their own process. Thank you. And I had a couple of other questions, um, which I'll just go through. And can you- Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, is it, do you have to choose whether you're gonna be a project seat or a general seat, or is it just either or, or you know, are they mutually exclusive? Um, they are not. So you could, in, in theory, uh, run for both. We are going to, we do have the deadline for the project seats a bit earlier than the general seats uh, so that, that we, people can see who are being put forward for the, the project nominations ahead of time and they can kind of adjust as necessary. Okay, perfect. Um, so I had another question, which was, uh, what happens if the number of candidates is less than the number of seats? So let's say for the project seats, we have four seats, but, and we only get, um, let's say we just get four nominations in. So some projects don't put anybody forward. Uh, so the answer to that is they will, um, they will all be then assigned the seats or kind of de facto get them. So where possible, we would love to have an election and we'd love to have uh, you know, a, a good set of candidates who, who want to get involved with the TOC. But in the event that we don't have enough, uh, we, we will be yeah, de facto assigning them the seats. And um, another thing to note, uh, election officers. So Gail McCommons is, is the chief election officer. Uh, I'll be assisting as well. And Fatty, uh, who is a current TOC member, has also kindly agreed to help out uh, and particularly uh, on the kind of voter registration, uh, helping us review uh, folks coming in and approving them for, for voting. So many thanks, Fatih. And any other questions? 
I just was looking at our uh, insights and it doesn't look like they're correct. I'll get with you later on that. Yeah, let's have a, a sync because I know we, we pushed folks to to try to get Ortelius on boarded with that, um, but it might be, we might need to just manually figure that out if it's not correct. Yeah, because it's, yeah, I'll, I'll touch base with you. Perfect. All right, back to the agenda. Oops, I hit the wrong button. One day I'll figure out how to do this tab switching correctly in Zoom. Okay. All right, Steve, um, you need resources for a cluster. Yeah, so um, currently Ortelius is running the um, its website and uh, the documentation are under uh, a Kubernetes cluster that's in Azure. Um, we were able to get some credits from Azure a year ago, and that's going to be expiring, uh, I think, like June 25th. So I just need to um, see if there's resources available from the CDF that we can move um, those couple containers over. Yeah, do you have any estimate of cost? Uh, it's the really, really low. There are a couple of Nginx containers, so uh, we're, I'll have to double check, but I think we're in like the 100 to $200 range a month. Okay, yeah, it should be no problem to get moved over to the CDF stuff. I don't know any of the logistics for the billing accounts on Azure. Um, I have only ever set up like some of the GCP stuff, but I'm pretty sure we have one somewhere because uh, Suke and Jenkins were using it. Um, and, and if we need to move from, from one cloud provider to another, it's no big deal. Yeah, I think that was the, the question we were going to ask. Uh, yeah, we're currently constantly trying to, to shuffle cloud usage and take advantage of what's really available versus what's not. Um, but yeah, if you let us know which clouds you can use uh, and kind of monthly spend, then um, we can throw that in with the mix and, and figure out what's what are the best options with the account management. Okay. And yeah, just how who who you expect would need access, uh, and clearly the fewer people, the better. Yeah, and or, who, or the simpler. Right, and who should I uh, send that information to you to, to you, Tracy? Um, just send it to me and CC Dan for now, okay. and Dan, Laura, Dan L. Uh, maybe I'll I'll have a, a follow up conversation with you. If sure. You can touch base on that. All right. Perfect. I'll get that out. All right, anybody else want to do a GSOC update without Tara? Yeah, I don't have full details, but I do know admins Tara and Oleg um, had, we had been accepted. We had a number of seats, I want to say six, uh, but I, it's not clear to me. Um, I, I think they, they can share the, the final allocation or what they're, they're thinking there. So, sorry, Dan. I think we'll have to leave that one to, to Tara and Oleg when they next show up. Yeah, they've been the ones driving this. I'm sorry, I apologize as well. I just have not had an ear into that program. Cool. All right, next week then, <laughs> or I guess two weeks. Anything else for today? I had a quick follow up um, just on the topic around the MLOps last time. I just wanted to sort a, a discussion around um, kind of communication with regulators. Um, so not a huge update, but I did want to say, just checked in with a, a couple of folks at Linux Foundation and um, in general, the, the sentiment was, uh, yeah, let's keep tabs on it. Uh, let's understand what's going on. But typically, unless there's a conversation related to um, open source being restricted or use of open source being restricted, uh, we'll tend not to get involved. Uh, so I think we there are kind of more other partner activist organizations who we could 
kind of loop in if necessary, but um, yeah, unless it's specifically related to these policies or these regulations are going to be bad for open source and bad for certain communities to access open source, uh, it's not something we typically get involved in. Okay, thanks for that. Cool. All right. Anything else? Once, going twice. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Uh, tr uh, Tracy, could you Thanks, hang everyone. on for just a sec? Sure. Um, I was at that the uh, I went to that page that you shared for voter eligibility, and that looks like the voter ed eligibility form is not shared. The voter registration form. Ah. Oh. I go to it and it says you need permission. It's probably just the not the um, correct link. I'll just send it over to you. It should be. We yeah. Let me fix that now. So, can okay. you check permissions while we're here? Tracy Reagan, can you click on the link I just put in chat and see if you can see that? Sure. Yeah, I just I just tried it. You can't get to it. Yeah, I think the form's not the public. Yet. CD Foundation TOC general seats. No. Uh, voter no. registration. Under oh, voter registration. eligibility, which is directly under the candidate nominations, second bullet point. Hmm. It should be public by default. Doesn't look like it is. Yeah, yeah, I don't... If you want to check again, Tracy Reagan, or... Yep, I can see it now. Sweet. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. It's okay. copied and pasted from the other ones. It's weird. But... <laughs> I don't know, but I can see it now. So thanks. Awesome. Thank you. So, okay. All right. Bye. Well, thanks for highlighting that. Thanks. No problem. Bye.